Good morning, and welcome to morning prayer on the Thursday, May 28th. Let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. O come, let us worship and praise. Our psalm for today is the 80th psalm. O shepherd of Israel, hear us, you who fed Joseph's flock. Shine forth from your cherubim throne upon Ephraim, Benjamin, Manasseh. O Lord, rouse up your might. O Lord, come to our help. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your faith shine on us, and we shall be saved. Lord God of hosts, how long will you have frown on your people's plea? You have fed them with tears for their bread, an abundance of tears for their drink. You have made us the taunt of our neighbors, our enemies laugh to us to scorn. God of hosts, bring us back, let your faith shine on us, and we shall be saved. You brought a vine out of Egypt to plant it. To plant it, you drove out the nations. Before you cleared the ground, it took root and spread through the land. The mountains were covered with its shadows, the cedars of God with its boughs. It stretched out its branches to the sea, to the great river. It stretched out its chutes. Then why have you broken down its walls? It is plucked by all who pass by. It is ravaged by the boar of the forest, devoured by the beasts of the field. God of hosts, turn again, we implore. Look down from heaven and see. Visit this vine and protect it, the vine your right hand has planted. People have burnt it with fire and destroyed it. May they perish at the frown of your faith. Face. May your hand be on the people you have chosen, the people you have given your strength. And we shall never forsake you again. Give us life that we may call upon your name. God of hosts, bring us back. Let your faith shine on us, and we shall be saved. Lord God, eternal shepherd, you so tend the vineyard you planted that now it extends its branches even to the farthest coast. Look down on your church and come to us. Help us remain in your Son as branches on the vine, that, planted firmly in your love, we may testify before the whole world to your great power working everywhere. Amen. A reading from the first letter of the Apostle John, the fifth chapter. I have written this to you to make you realize that you possess eternal life, you who believe in the name of the Son of God. We have this confidence in God, that he hears us whenever we ask for anything according to his will. And since we know that he hears us whenever we ask, we know that what we have asked him for is ours. Anyone who sees his brother or sister sinning, if the sin is not deadly, should petition God, and thus life will be given to the sinner. This is only for those whose sin is not deadly. There is such a thing as a deadly sin. I do not say that one should pray about that. True, all wrongdoing is sin, but not all sin is deadly. We know that no one begun of God commits sin. Rather, God protects the one begun by him, and so the evil one cannot touch him. We know that we belong to God while the whole world is under the evil one. We know, too, that the Son of God has come and has given us discernment to recognize the one who is true. And we are in the one who is true, for we are in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is a true God in eternal life. My little children, be on your guard against idols. And a reading from Romans chapter 8. 
If Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, while the Spirit lives because of justice. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then he who raised Jesus from the dead will bring your mortal bodies to life also through his Spirit dwelling in you. And a reading from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. It was in one spirit that all of us, whether Jew or Greek, slave or free, were baptized into one body. All of us have been given to drink the one spirit. And a reading from a commentary on the Gospel of John by St. Cyril of Alexandria. After Christ has completed his mission on earth, it still remained necessary for us to become sharers in the divine nature of the word. We had to give up our own life and be so transformed that we would begin to live an entirely new kind of life that would be pleasing to God. This was something we could do only by sharing in the Holy Spirit. It was most fitting that the sending of the Spirit and his descent upon us should take place after the departure of Christ our Savior. As long as Christ was with them in the flesh, it must have seemed to believers that they possessed every blessing in him. But when the time came for him to ascend to his heavenly Father, it was necessary for him to be united through his Spirit to those who worshipped him and to dwell in our hearts through faith. Only by his own presence within us, in this way, could he give us confidence to cry out, Abba, Father. Make it easy for us to grow in holiness, and, through our possession of the all-powerful Spirit, fortify us invincibly against the wiles of the e-devil and the assaults of people. It can easily be shown from examples, both in the Old Testament and the New, that the Spirit changes those in whom he comes to dwell. He so transforms them that they begin to live a completely new kind of life. Saul was told by the prophet Samuel, The Spirit of the Lord will take possession of you, and you shall be changed into another man. St. Paul writes, As we behold the glory of the Lord with unveiled faces, that glory which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit, transforms us all into his own likeness, from one degree of glory to another. Does this not show that the Spirit changes those in whom he comes to dwell and alters the whole pattern of their lives? With the Spirit within them, it is quite natural for people who had been absorbed by the things of this world to become entirely otherworldly, an outlook, and for cowards to become people of great courage. There can be no doubt that this is what happened to the disciples. The strength they received from the Spirit enabled them to fold firmly to the love of Christ, facing the violence of their persecutors and afraid. Very true, then, was our Savior saying that it was to their advantage for him to return to heaven. His return was a time appointed for the descent of the Holy Spirit. Let us continue with the Gospel Canticle, which will be the verses spoken tonight. I mean, this morning. Blessed are you, Lord, the God of Israel. You have come to your people and set them free. You have raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of your servant David. Through your holy prophets, you promised of old to save us from our enemies, to show mercy to our forebears, and to remember your holy covenant. This was the oath you swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous before you all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare the way, to give God's people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Mighty God of mercy, we thank you for the resurrection dawn, bringing the glory of our risen Lord who makes every day new. 
Especially we thank you for the sustaining goodness of your creation. For the new creation in Christ and all gifts of healing and forgiveness. For the gift of relationship with others. For the communion of faith in your church. Merciful God of might, renew this weary world. Heal the hearts of all your children and bring about your peace for all in Christ Jesus, the living Lord. Especially we pray for those who govern nations of the world. For the people and countries ravaged by strife or warfare. For all who work for peace and international harmony. For all who strive to save the earth from carelessness and destruction. For the church of Jesus Christ in every land. For all those who are infected by the coronavirus. For the grieving families of the 100,000 lost here in the United States and all the many others lost throughout this world. For our doctors, nurses, medical experts. For our custodians and janitors and all frontline workers. For all those who are sick and suffering. For our world leaders and our local officials, that you be with them and guide them through these trying times. For our pastors, for our bishops, and for our councils, and for our synods. For all those we either raise up aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Blessed be Christ the Lord. Through him we all have access to the Father in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Christ, hear us. Send your Spirit, the longed-for guest of our hearts, and grant that we may never offend him. You rose from the dead and are seated at the right hand of God. Make intercession for us always with the Father. Through your Spirit, unite us with yourself so that trial or persecution or danger may never separate us from your love. May we welcome each other in the way you have welcomed us to the glory of God. Father, let your Spirit come upon us with power to fill us with his gifts. May we make our hearts pleasing to you and ready to do your will. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We give thanks to you, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have protected us through the night from all harm and danger. We ask that you would also protect us today from sin and all evil, that our life and actions may please you. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us, so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As many as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. Alleluia. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dancing clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. 
But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Let us pray. O God, for redemption, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, so that we may rise to live with Christ forever. Who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Some announcements are that at 10.30 a.m. today, we will be having our Bible study where we continue reading the book of Ezra, who is a historian in the Old Testament. We invite you to join us there. The link can be found on the St. Mark's calendar. Another announcement is that on Saturday evening, replacing our normal evening prayer will be the Pentecost Vigil Service, which will be live streamed at 7.30 at night when evening prayer normally is. We invite you all to join us for that as we look forward to Pentecost and have a service there. A mighty God bless us and direct our days and our deeds in peace. Amen. Amen. We wish you all a blessed day, and we look forward to seeing you for evening prayer. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.